Hi. I'd like us this week to begin thinking about how we might write and organize a longer written piece, such as a term paper or a research essay. Having these in mind before we embark on the process will help you strengthen your claims and organize your thoughts. There are a lot of resources out there to help you develop a thesis and organize a paper, and I've read them all. Just kidding. But over the years, I've read many of the guides, and from that, I'm presenting to you a distilled version of some of the best advice I've heard regarding developing a thesis, writing a thesis statement, and organizing a paper around it. Let's start with developing a thesis. First, I must tell you that a thesis is different from a thesis statement. The thesis is the idea or concept. The statement is an expression of it. So for now, we're just talking about the concept. A thesis, even without its statement, is an argument, a belief, or an attitude. So as a first important point, we must make sure that our thesis is debatable. We can't argue that the sun comes up every morning. Everybody already knows that the sun does not come up, but appears to come up to us because of the rotation of the earth. It's not an argument. That is a fact. We need an argument. In other words, a position on some law or rule, convention, or state of being. For example, people should use fewer plastic straws is something that's arguable. A second extremely important thing to check is that the claim is limited. In other words, it's much worse to argue that climate change is a problem, although it's an argument that must be made shockingly often nowadays, than to argue that consuming less beef is an effective way of combating climate change. The first is far too broad for a research article. Many hundreds of books and scientific papers have been written in service of that point. The second, however, allows you to dive deeply into the specific cause and effect of beef consumption and climate change, much more suitable for a shorter paper. Now, how to write a thesis statement. Before I go on, I must mention that nothing I'm about to say is true in every scenario. In each piece of writing, our common sense and our sense of order should prevail. I'll use the word usually a lot, however, because the advice I'm about to give usually works in most academic scenarios, and following these conventions will show an academic audience that you know some of the moves associated with academic writing. Writing in this way acts as a form of cultural capital in the academic world. There are some things that are always true of thesis statements, however. One is that they directly reflect what we said about a thesis earlier. A thesis statement will express a point of view on an issue. It will be arguable, and if it is good, it will be limited. Here's one. Technology is good for students. It's not an excellent thesis statement. It's arguable, but it's too broad. How about students have to rely on technology to learn? This one's not good either. Post-COVID, is there any argument about this? Now consider this. Students should keep their cameras on during a remote class because it improves attention and engagement. This is limited to a specific online learning situation. It's arguable, and it's even able to be researched. You can have a study that measures if there's any correlation between having cam cameras on and success in classes. I'm certain there's many going on right now, and this is a debate that's very lively amongst you know, myself and my colleagues. So, some ways to limit a broad subject, as, such as, say, technology and learning, would be to limit it by time. In other words, look at a brief time period, like the last year or a specific class, or by place. Uh, specify a location where you can make a change. Argue about local laws instead of national ones, and you'll have a more limited thesis off the bat. One way to ensure that you have both of the bases covered, that is, that it's limited and that it's arguable, is to use a template from Graf and Birkenstein's They Say, I Say. Take a look at this one. If you can place your argument within this field by filling in the blanks of the template, you're well on your way to writing an excellent thesis statement and even a strong introductory paragraph. So this says, in discussions of X would be a topic, one controversial issue has been, and you might fill in like whether Y or Z is true, on the one hand, 
blank, you'd give one person's point of view, argues that blank. On the other hand, another person contends the opposite view. Others even maintain a third view. And then you'd add my own view is and put your own view there. If you can list the reasons generally for your view right after that my own view comment, you'll be in excellent shape when it comes to specificity as well. Here's an example of a thesis statement that generally takes this format. Hit that pause button and try it a few times with controversial issues you see around you. Now, where should a thesis statement go in your paper? The rule of thumb, which many of you have doubtlessly heard, is as a single sentence at the end of the first paragraph, or at the end of your introduction if it is longer than a paragraph. But, as I mentioned earlier, that's not always the case, and you'll find instances of excellent essay writing with the thesis statement not in that exact spot, or even it may not even be present. present. It may be implied throughout a piece. But usually, you want to put your thesis statement at the end of your introduction. That is because the thesis statement, if written well, will serve as a roadmap to the rest of your paper. And one thing strong academic writers almost always do is keep in the reader's mind what's coming. The main mode is this. Make a point or a subpoint, and then prove it with reasoning and evidence. Add to that a focus on proving other arguments, that is, arguments that may be made against your thesis wrong, in other words, disagreeing with others with a different view, and you've covered the main moves of an academic argument. In the article entitled Writing and Learn to Write, teacher and scholar Doug Hess puts it this way, quote, A good deal of writing takes the form of generalization and support. The writer has a progression of points he or she wants to make and includes support for each assertion, sometimes with one idea and its support in each paragraph. If this works well, readers feel as though they are being led in some meaningful progression from one idea to the next." Unquote. You should keep this in mind in large and small ways in your paper. An essay that is coherent or unified is, is one in which everything fits together. A reader can point to any detail in any paragraph and connect the dots to the thesis statement. Take a look at this graphic organizer. As you can see, there's a clear line from any point on the edge back to the central point. The idea in the center of this organizer would be a thesis or the main claim of your paper. The next level would be the subclaims, the important ideas that support your main claim, and they may correlate to a paragraph or a single section of your paper. Toward the edges of the image would be filled with evidence and detail that support the subclaims. This is how you build a strong argument over several pages. You take these one at a time and build them out. So, in the same way an essay usually has a thesis statement toward its beginning, a paragraph should have a topic sentence, a more general statement that prepares readers for this more, more specific evidence and detail to follow. The Elements of Style, an important book on writing, puts it this way, quote, As a rule, begin each paragraph either with a sentence that suggests the topic or with a sentence that helps the transition, unquote. If done well, each topic sentence should somehow link back to the thesis, either to further establish the point or to address a counterargument. Topic sentences correspond to the subclaim level or the second level on that screen. Then the detail and evidence in each paragraph should serve to hold up and prove the proposition made in the topic sentence. In this way, you can consider a longer essay, like a five or ten page term paper, as a kind of series of mini essays, each establishing a point of support for the main thesis. That also leads to a kind of unspoken truth. The broader the thesis, the longer the paper. The more limited the thesis, the shorter the paper. Although this isn't 100% universally true all the time, it's true enough of the time to consider it a rule. So, as you go forward and start thinking about writing and researching a topic, you should also think of ways to refine your thesis, limit it, and figure out what you'll have to prove to convince the readers of its truth. And this will serve as the organizing principle of a solid 
research essay or article.